Hello everyone, this is Anfit from ATF Gaming and welcome back to NASCAR Heat 3. Today we are starting off Season 4. And this season is going to be an interesting one because we have signed with Joe Gibbs Racing for the Cup Series. And we have started our own team in the Xfinity Series. Now, as a reminder, since it has been a week since that episode went up, uh, we will be treating this season similarly to how we treated last season as far as the Xfinity series. I will be doing mostly off screen and the Cup series will be the main focus of the episode. So with that in mind, I'm going to head off to the Power Shares 300 at Daytona. Let me show you guys what our team looks like right now. Oh, we got to set an incentive contract and I'm not very confident about this at the start. Um, actually, I can't tell you what the team... Well, I, I guess I can if I press Go Race. So this is what we're at right now. Um, Daytona's going to be a struggle, no doubt. Uh, but then once we get there, I believe we're at 90 overall for everything um, for now. And then we've got all the chassis we need for the entire season, so we don't have to worry about money on that. We just got to upgrade the maximum for each department. That's really the only upgrade left to do, and then our employees all the way, so... Uh, Daytona is going to be a struggle, but then we'll have 90s and um, go forward there. So I'm going to head off to Daytona, and I will see you guys afterwards. Okay, so I accidentally skipped over the payout screen, so we're going to have to settle for this screen. Um, I finished second, purely on pit strategy. Um, there was a, a very tense moment in the race. Um, I, had taken, I had taken the lead at... Uh, at the beginning of stage three, based on fuel strategy, dropped back because I knew uh, I wasn't that fast on a restart and I wasn't that fast in general. Uh, so I ended up dropping back to third and I was pushing Ross Chastain to the lead. We got to the lead and we were clear of Sadler, we were single file, and then this happened. So yeah, that was the only stressful moment of the race. After that, I fell back to like 6th or 7th, and then I made my way back through the field. I ended up picking Ryan Truex as the guy I was going to work with that time. Uh, but I, it's, it's just the same thing that it always is with freaking restricted plate races here. Uh, it gets single file, and I, I have no way around the leader. So uh, we didn't get any stage points in any of the other stages, so that's why our points gap was... Um, pretty low but yeah so that is what happened there but now we get to head off to our first race as a driver of Joe Gibbs Racing at the Daytona 500 all right let's see where we qualify for the Daytona 500 all right. 30th that's about what you would expect with restricted plate qualifying here yeah Daryl Wallace Jr. is on the pole that is interesting. Danica Patrick's 20th. So, oh boy, we get to have Danica Patrick in this series. That's just fabulous. All right, let's go. We're live from beautiful Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida, for today's running of the great American race, the Daytona 500. Another season of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup racing is about to get underway. The forecast calls for blue skies and temps in the mid-70s perfect weather for racing. The drivers are in their cars and the sold out crowd is on their feet. It's that time of year again. It's time for NASCAR racing. All right, forgot all about those PRN intros there. We got Joey Logano starting at the back. That'll move us up a spot, I think, and that's it. So yeah, that moves us to the inside lane. So I've never been happier for Joey Logano to do something in my life, so. All right, let's see what we can do here. Um, I'm very concerned about the fact that this season might be pretty darn easy and Joe Gibbs racing on hard difficulty, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. If 
it, it's got to be similar to last season where we won just a, a ridiculous amount of races in the Xfinity Series with Penske. I feel like it is. Okay, this bottom lane outside, just did outside. not go there in the corner. Usually uh, on the starts and the restarts yeah, even, going through one and two, one of the two lanes decides to just crap on itself, and this time it was the bottom lane. In the Xfinity Series race, it was the top lane. So, it, it seems to be kind of random here. Unless if it's that, the Cup Series is the bottom lane, the Xfinity Series is the top lane. I don't, no! Oh, that was my fault. That was my fault entirely. Uh, luckily, I didn't get any damage from that. Um, yeah, that was my fault entirely. I got into a uh, hammock there. Let's try that again, shall we? I'm a little tired, apparently. This is what happened in a, cu a couple episodes ago. I ran a truck race, or in this case, an Xfinity race, and it just put me to sleep almost. And now here I am trying to commentate half asleep, apparently. I was wide awake at the middle of the day. I don't know why I'm tired. I got a good night's sleep and all, so I shouldn't be tired. But now, for some reason, this game has just put me to sleep. Oh boy, oh boy, we're three wide. Oh boy, we're three wide. We're three wide. You know what? Could have been worse. We got to the inside lane, so I'm not going to complain too much. Oh, uh, this has not been the most ideal of start, but I think once the field gets a little bit more strung out, I'll be, be able to move around a little better. I'd like to get underneath Menard off the corner here, and I can, hopefully. Could, yep. Alright, I think we're just going to follow Chris Buescher here. No need to make it four wide. As I almost make it four, as I almost make it four wide. Oh, crap. Uh, I, I just slight, slightly touch it and it just I I lose all sense of drivability but the AI is just perfectly fine I do miss that 78 car I really do all oh, with three wide and I have no drafting hop I do miss the sight of that 78 car it's really unfortunate what happened to them but it is what it is I wonder if maybe they had tried if they had tried, you know, sign, you know, a, dr uh, a guy who no brings his own funding, but I don't know, if, I don't think that would have been able to afford, you know, the Joe Gibbs affiliate, but it might have been able to keep him going, but I know Barney Visser was very keen on not having um, his company sponsor the car again, so I guess we're pitting here, I don't really know why. I feel like we could have made it to the end of the stage here, but apparently I, my master stra strategy has gotten us up to 13th here for some reason. Don't really have a good explanation for that, but here I am nonetheless. You know, I raced all these against all these cars in the Fantasy Cup. Which just ended, by the way. I hope you guys enjoyed that ending. Um, we were both kind of a little salty at the end, so I'm glad that Mr. Uh, Mr. McLean made that kind of nice outro for us because we really didn't do it justice uh, at the end. I know John was upset for losing the championship, and I was upset for how that last race ended, and we couldn't finish it out clean. So, um, so we didn't necessarily have the best outro there, so Mr. McLean kind of put it together a little thing. And, and uh, if you haven't already, be sure to check out Mr. McLam. Um, he has multiple channels. His channel that does a lot of different reviews, like movie reviews and stuff, uh, is called McBlam Entertainment. I know that's that's kind of a collaborative channel with a couple other people. Uh, but he also does gaming content on McBlam Gaming, and he does racing content at McBlam Racing. He's he's really focused on you know not having variety channels so he decided to make like four or five different channels for himself meanwhile while I'm praising Mr. McBlam uh, we're in the top five so I guess I should do that more often is that something that me and John discovered while we were racing at Homestead like we were talking about Mr. McBlam and then 
We, we were having a good clean race and, and all that. I feel like that's something that... Why am I helping Ricky Steinhoff instead of my teammate? Who freaking knows? But I wouldn't mind a stage victory here. It's just a matter of whether I can somehow coerce a way around Steinhoff here. But yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, as of now, there are no plans to do a different kind of fantasy cup as far as, you know, Formula One or... We had even discussed doing a Wreckfest Fantasy Cup, and that that would probably be more likely than Formula One. But the thing with Wreckfest is it's so unpredictable, like even more than what our NASCAR Heat 3 Fantasy Cup was. And I just feel like it would be really hard to de determine like a merit system for a winner on that because it's just so predictable, The a or unpredictable. The AI is just a mess, and Still it's really... Oh, we got an East End house here. Let's see if we can complete the pass or not. So I, I don't know how that would work. Uh, or if we just do a kind of like a for fun series thing. Maybe get a couple other people in. We cleared the pass. We cleared the pass. We made the pass and we cleared Stenhouse. I can blind. Um, so yeah, we did it. Um, I, I have only a couple laps left. I guess I'll stay with it. But yeah, there's no plans as of right now to do it. I think me and John are both kind of in the boat of taking a break from uh, competing against each other in racing games. <laughs> um, because Fantasy Cup definitely brought out some interesting emotions and um, frustrations, I guess. I, I've, most of the frust... Oh! Somebody crashed, so that's the end of the stage. Hey, we won a stage! How about that? How about that? Uh, and we're pitting again. Uh, looks like another two tire stop. And we maintain the lead. Oh boy. You know, I, I was talking earlier about how I was, I was uh, concerned about how easy this would be. And those concerns are starting to come to fruition here. Uh, look. Well, let me attempt to maintain this lead before I say anything about that. Because, at least in most vehicles, once we hit fourth gear, we kind of just stall out. And that does appear to be the same situation here. However, it's our teammate who's caught us. So hopefully he's he's very nice and, and not at all like a normal Kyle Busch. And maybe he'll help us. Unfortunately, he decided to take the outside lane. So, um, Mr. Chase Elliott might have a better line here for us to follow. Well, Bush is kind of powering around the outside here. Oh, I was too late to block. Okay. Oh, and I'm too late to block Elliott, too. Okay, bye, everyone. I, I knew I wasn't going to maintain that lead. I was surprised how good Kyle Bush managed to stay there on the outside. I, I know I can't do that if I tried, but I guess the AI live under different standards. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind... Oh, Kyle, why do you have to go to the outside? I would help you as you are a teammate, even though I can't stand you winning. Uh, but Chase Elliott, unfortunately, decided to take the correct lane at Daytona, and so I'm going with him. Apologies, teammate. Not a good start to our relationship, I know, blah, 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 blah. Alright, so we're going to work with Chase Elliott here a bit. we got ten laps. But, yeah. So let me talk a little bit about the schedule and the channel as a whole, as I apparently get underneath Chase Elliott. Um, so we've got both this and NASCO 6. Oh, dang, it hit the apron. That killed all my mo momentum. If Stenhouse stays with me, which he doesn't. Never mind. Um, we'll try to side draft a bit. Oh boy, we gotta. I'll block the inside. We get. We got a gaggle of cars behind us. But uh, we got both this game and NASCAR six going twice a week. Um, and that that's probably gonna be it for now. Uh, like I said in the channel update video recently, um, July especially is going to be a very busy month. I'm in the process of pre-recording, but I'm not doing a very good job because we've also been working on uh, some home stuff where we've got a dumpster and we're getting rid of all the old stuff, so I've been pretty preoccupied with that this week at least, so. Oh, itchy nose. Oh, don't hit the wall. 
Okay. Find the issues while also not lacking. Didn't do a good job. Okay, I'm just going to pause here. One second. Oh boy. Alright. That was one itchy nose right there. And I still haven't completely gotten it fixed, but it's better. But uh, yeah, we've been doing some house, you know. Stay low, stay low. I wouldn't stay say low. renovations, but just kind of, you know, cl clearing out all the stuff that you know been sitting in our house for many years. So, uh, been working hard on that. Uh, so I haven't gotten as much time to record as I would have liked over the last couple of days. But hopefully, I can you know, kind of sit down and Careful, get a little better at that these next couple of days. But um. And if not, you know, I might be missing an episode here or there in the coming weeks. Um, the last two weeks of July are really where the busyness uh, is going to be. So even, even like, next week or, or this week and next week, um, we won't be as bad of a situation. Oh, block Ryan Blaney. Where did he come from? So... We managed to pass Chase Elliott that one time, but other than that, I have not been able to actually clear and make the pass. But I've kind of got an idea as to how I might be able to do it, because he does seem to have a tendency to wash off the corner. If I can time a run like this, kind of, uh, only get, get more of a run before I make the move. I think that's the thing. I really need to charge up a run, lay back a bit, and then get a huge run down the back stretch, and then get underneath right, him. And actually, that cleared him. Wasn't expecting to clear him there. All right. But if we do end up behind, you know, Blaney or Elliot or Bush or something, we at least kind of got a strategy now. Was not expecting to clear him there. I was expecting, you know, similar thing to what happened earlier. And now he's starting to fall back as well. Are we still two by two back there? Let me look. Uh, yeah, we're pretty much two by two all the way back through the field right now. So the outside lane definitely has some possibility to be um, in in the fold here. It's not just kind of a dead dead man walking situation there. Um, now we got Kyle Busch kind of coming back into the fray here. They're pitting. Excuse me? Five laps to go. We're one lap short on fuel? You've got to be kidding me. Okay, well, that changes things a bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's no way I can make it. Um, okay, well, now we got to... Oh, there's a bug. we got to make a clean entry to pit road. Get a splash of fuel. Never mind. That sucks because all those people who were on pit road are not going to pass us. Oh, that is really unfortunate. Um, do that, no tires. Well, that probably takes the win out of our hands right there, unfortunately. But, um... We'll, we'll try to make the best out of it here. we got a couple of slow cars right here if we can get by them pretty quickly. Um, might be able to make a run at it. But yeah, I was not paying attention to fuel and I was not aware that we had to make a pit stop there. But you know what? We passed a bunch of cars there already, so... Uh, I'm assuming this is green white shepherd situation. Yes, it is. This was not the smart decision, I don't think. Car on the outside now. No, it most definitely was not. Car on the outside. I gotta, I gotta put my leader brain away from my in the pack brain, because that was a move that I would make if I was, you know, in second place, but not while I'm in tenth place. And I also wasn't fully up to speed either, so that probably didn't help the situation either. Okay, so. Yeah, winning, unless if a miracle happens here, which is still very possible. If I can get a run on Elliot here, that's a start. Um, but we kind of need a miracle to happen in order to 
or if I can just get on the stand house here and have somebody in front of me. Jimmy, yeah, come down, Jimmy, yeah. Okay, we're still gonna be three wide going into the corner. Okay. If Jimmy washes up a bit, he kind of does, kind of does. Not enough though. Okay. Well, I mean, let's push Jimmy to the win if we can. It's gonna be close between those two, that's for sure. But I think Jimmy's got it. Good for him. Good for him. Good for him. But that was an unfortunate circumstance to end what was a really good race. And I think I definitely could have won if I had managed to get on the pit road cleanly and all that. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. I mean, a third place effort in our first race as a full-time driver. Can't complain too much about that. Let's see if I can get a better angle on that. Oh yeah, right there. That's our that's our thumbnail angle right there. Beautiful. But yeah, Jimmy Johnson wins today. Tona 500 by... Four one hundredths of a second. Four one hundredths of a second. Uh, Trevor Bain did not finish the race. We got some unusual characters in the back. Uh, there's our wreck that we caused earlier. But, yeah, overall a decent race. Payday, I'm assuming, is going to be really good. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good payday. So you can't go wrong with that. Uh, we're fifth in the point standings. We did get that stage win, so that'll help us a bit in the playoff points department. But good for Jimmy. I mean, I, I, I had a choice there. Jimmy was on the inside lane, so I took it. Uh, so, yeah, let's head back to the menu. 47,000 fans after that race, and that puts a notch on our incentive contract as well. No messages from anybody. Wow, okay. Guess people weren't that impressed, huh? But uh, Atlanta, I assume for both series, is what's going to be next on the docket. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more content from ATF Gaming, be sure to hit that red subscribe button. It really means a lot to me, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.